I'm Judy Crane, and this is a free art lesson on painting reflections. I have my palette laid out, and you can check out the video at jerryzotterrata.com from my starter kit to get all that information. But one of the uh, basic things to know about reflections are that reflections always come toward you, and it doesn't matter where you are. Um, what is being reflected is going to come toward where you are. It is, not re uh, it is not at all dependent on the sun. So if we have, this is our ground, and we're going to have a tree. Um, this, this is a good example, I'm not going to paint this, but this is a good example of how this tree comes out from the ground and goes up and it's, it's the inverse of that that you see. So on a more simple note, if a tree is leaning this way, the reflection of it has to be this way. Every part of the tree has to reflect directly toward you. So the, this tip of this uh, tree should be, the reflection should be directly underneath it. And the relationship should be exactly the same. If you're standing there at eye level, then this distance from top to bottom and from here to here would be the same. If you're standing up on a mountaintop looking down, then you're going to see more reflection because you're seeing more water. If you're laying on the ground looking across at it, you're going to see less water, so the reflection would be foreshortened. The, um, the tree would be longer. So we have a tree. We have a reflection. We'll have another tree another reflection. Uh, this one is going to have a branch coming off here, so we go down about equal distance, bring the branch down here. If the, if the foliage on the tree is here, like this, then our foliage down here will be similar. Now, the one thing to remember in this regard is that the water is looking kind of up under the tree, so your foliage doesn't have to be an exact mirror image. The other factor that helps to make things look like a reflection is that it isn't a mirror and the colors won't be identical like I've done them here. Because of the influence of the water, which might be dirty, the influence of the sky, which is um, changing the color on the water, then reflections are going to be adjusted, whereby a very dark reflection, for instance, say we have a black post here. In the reflection of that post, it is not going to be as black. And the reason for that is the water influences that reflection. So it won't be as black. Likewise, if I have a bright yellow bush here, that yellow bush is not going to look quite as yellow or quite as white because of the influence of the water. So the darkest things will not reflect as dark, the lightest things will not reflect as light. If this is white here, it would reflect, say you have really bright, bright sky, almost white sky, almost white sky down here wouldn't necessarily be that muddy, I had green in my brush, but it might be much darker uh, and it could be clearer and brighter up here in the, uh, in the sky. So the colors become a little more grayed in the water and the values become a little bit more adjusted in the water. 
This is in contrast to a shadow. If this were a plane of ground and we have a tree here, here we have this tree, and there's lights coming from behind, this shadow might fall like that but not the reflection. The reflection is always going to come down from wherever you're standing directly toward you, right below each thing that it reflects. So the key things to remember are the colors are not quite as bright, a little more grayed, the darks are not as dark, the lights are not as light, the angle of the reflections, and then the edges are going to be probably a little bit softer. So that's kind of the key to making reflections in a painting. I hope you've enjoyed this free art lesson and come back and see an entire painting. Thank you.